off the eastern coast of Australia, in the southern Pacific, there is an ecological masterpiece. For millions of years, ocean currents and persistent winds have formed the largest sand island in the world. It is also the only sand island in the world to support a rainforest. 80 miles long and 8 miles wide, with freshwater lakes and sand dunes rising almost 800 feet, Fraser Island is a natural treasure. But 22 years ago, John Sinclair was one of the few who recognized the island's fragility. He took it upon himself to save the island from the ravages of sand mining and logging. In the 1970s, Mining the sand for heavy minerals threatened to turn the lush lowland areas into deserts. But John Sinclair fought for Fraser Island from nearby Maryborough. Critics argue that the end of mining would devastate the local economy. Sinclair countered that tourism on a protected Fraser Island would bring new employment. Neighbors, afraid of losing their jobs, turned against him. Some stores refused to serve him. He became an outcast. I've had people uh, stand up uh, when I pulled up outside my uh, uh, parents-in-law's house and uh, scream out across the street and say, get out of town, you rotten, uh, and swore at me. Finally, in 1976, Sinclair was victorious. He convinced the national government to stop sand mining. He was hailed as a national hero. But back home, the fight cost him his home, his marriage, and his job. He went to Sydney, a long ways from Fraser Island. But here, in a cramped office, Sinclair continued his crusade, this time to stop logging the island's rainforest. He inspired public opinion, lobbied legislators, and took his case to court. Though the legal battles brought him almost to bankruptcy, in 1991, 20 years after he began, Sinclair stopped logging on Fraser Island forever. Today, most of Fraser Island is not only a protected national park, but a World Heritage Site as well, enjoyed by hundreds of thousands of people. Most of the credit belongs to John Sinclair, but he isn't satisfied that his work is done. Recently, he was outraged that government officials had ignored the island's World Heritage status and turned this natural sand dune into an unnatural tree farm. I've requested, I've done everything that I could, and I've exhausted all options to persuade the, the government who committed this, perpetrated this sin against the uh, environment to rectify it. And since they're not going to do it, then I can see no other option but for me to do it because it's completely unnatural and the state government is abrogating its responsibility by allowing it to be perpetuated. I just wanted to report that there's uh, a little less work for you to do in the sand bone next to you, you're wrong. I've just demolished all of the trees there, so they won't need to be watered anymore, OK? And I did it at uh, between 9 and 10 a.m. this morning. I don't think I'm a hero at all, because I've got so much pleasure and so much value out of doing it that I think it's worth doing any time. And I'd do it again tomorrow if I had to. I mean, look where we are. For outstanding environmental achievement in Australia, Oceania, a 1993 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to John Sinclair of Gladesville, Australia.